All right, welcome back to the IDP Plus Ranking Show. My name is Nathan. I'm joined with our amazing co-hosts, Johnny Freakin' Fantasy and Brandon Lee TV. Uh, you guys, you know, we've been doing this now for a number of weeks, and we started off kind of as a short series covering different, um, you know, top 12s, tier lists, positional lists, and here we are. We're wrapping it up under this new monocle of IDP plus rankings uh it's a, one of our shows on the uh, idp plus youtube network so make sure you're subscribing to that but want to hear from you guys real quick like where can people find you what's been going on go go for it johnny so you can find me on twitter at johnny freak in f1 i've uh, been doing a lot of retweeting of our uh, idp plus team great content that's coming out especially coming up towards this draft combine a lot of rookie previews on there i also have been co-hosting a show with average joe's fantasy football my buddy steve so i've been on idp plus trends if you haven't checked that out go ahead and do so we're staying relevant with what content happens in the uh, off season and then into the season when the season rolls around so i've been doing a lot of podcasting man haven't really been doing much writing but i've been busy with the pods uh, uh, to me it's a good place yeah, you're you are a busy man, busy busy uh, on our channel, but also busy is Brandon Lee TV. But you you have a wide range of things going on. So tell the audience what's up with you. Yeah, absolutely. You can find me on all social media platforms, Brandon Lee at Brandon Lee TV. Pleasure to be back with you guys. I'm kicking out that fantasy football knowledge. As you know, the beast of fantasy football does not sleep. Uh, but yeah, just been hosting two podcasts, my Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast, covering all the hottest takes in sports, uh, doing a lot of women's basketball content. Guys, uh, the tournament coming up, March is madness. It's crazy right now. And then, of course, the Dukes of the Gridiron podcast as well. There it is. You know, you talk about how fantasy doesn't sleep. And hey, we are 24-7, 365 at idp plus you have uh not only this channel but you have the idp plus.com website go there use the url idp plus.com or idp dot plus uh and it will take you hey you know you might notice it's idp guys.org uh when you land but you know we are in that uh, uh, you know, shift uh, of our branding and getting more and more into IDP plus territory. But while you're there, become a subscriber, uh, check, you know, get access to, you know, our discord with, you know, uh, all of our uh, writers and analysts that you can directly interface with. Uh, it's a great, amazing community, you know, checking out our uh, premium articles, our tools, everything that we have going on. Uh, you can go there and utilize our promo code mock draft for a one dollar for the first month of a monthly subscription. So you can kind of try us out and make sure you like us and see how amazing we are uh, for just one dollar. So go over there, idpplus.com, and uh, you know you can see great, amazing articles similar to this wide receiver tiers by Joseph Harlow at Joe Low sixty three. Make sure you're following him because he's another guy that is on our team that is a hardworking, putting out a ton of content with our channel, uh, a very intelligent guy. So we're going to cover the wide receiver tiers here and, uh, you know, just getting started into tier one here. Starting off at number one is Justin Jefferson, then Jamar Chase, CeeDee Lamb, Amon Ross St. Brown, A.J. Brown, Chris Olave, Tyreek Hill, Brandon Ayuk, Jalen Waddle, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Puka Nakua, and Garrett Wilson. I got to tell you, and before I get into all my questions, you know, Puka Nakua is one of my favorite names to say in this wide receiver list. And if you recall right before the Super Bowl, uh, I think it was Keegan Michael Key uh, hosted the. Uh, there was like an honors or something right before the Super Bowl. And he just made a comment about how, you know, at some point in that show, he would just yell out Puka and he did it like three or four times. So I just want to start there. But uh, Johnny, who are some of the players that are kind of jumping off the, the board here for you that you're I mean, the, these this is the top tier. So, like, there's got to be a lot of names for for you of interest. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that top four, I think it's it's pretty solid, solidified there. 
Uh, even Amon Ross, St. Brown, 10 touchdowns. That's his career high. Had a great year in 2023. So I think he cemented himself in that top five. After that, it kind of opens up for discussion. I, I like A.J. Brown. I like what Joe's done. He put him in number five. You know, it's I, I'm not really um, too scared to look back on the end of the, the 2023 season. I think he really rebounds well next year uh, mm-hmm. with Jalen Hurts. So, yeah, I really like this top five. Um, Tyreek Hill, you know, it's a little surprising. Led the league in receiving yards. Tough to see him at number seven. But this is from a dynasty perspective. So age at 30 years old. Uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba, he's to me, he's got to earn it. You know, if you're if you're a dynasty guy and you're looking for that young um, superstar, he could be that. And we saw some Odell like catches. We saw glimpses with him, 600 and some receiving yards. But to me, he's got to earn that spot first. There's other guys on this list. Puka, you know, and, and Puka to me, I'd rank him a little bit higher. But um, you know, no no disrespect to Joe. Sometimes in fantasy football, you can't look behind. You got to look forward. So Jackson Smith and Jigba to me stands out in the sense of um, does he really belong here? But potential wise, you know, pedigree wise, I think that's the case. And uh, who knows what goes on with Lockett and, and new coaching there in Seattle. So I think better days are ahead for Jackson Smith and Jigba. Um, but we do get a lot of attribution to uh, youth here with with these guys. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and looking at one of the young guys here, uh, Garrett Wilson, this one for you, Brandon. Uh you know, is Garrett Wilson here in the top 12 because of the opportunity of Aaron Rodgers coming back? Um, you know, he he's on the Jets. There's been volatility at quarterback, but Aaron Rodgers could come in and be, you know, he could bounce back from that uh, that AC, uh, Achilles tear and, uh, you know, go back to old Aaron Rodgers or, you know, kind of who knows. What are your thoughts on Garrett Wilson at number 12? Yeah, you mentioned uh, just the upside there with Aaron Rodgers and the receivers that have benefited from being his number one target. Um, You know, it was incredible to watch his rehab, just speaking on AR-12 a little bit. It seemed like if they were competing for the playoffs and would have had a chance of making it, we could have possibly saw him come back last year. Um, So I think just based off of that, I think he's coming back with a vengeance. I think Garrett Wilson is going to come back and really benefit from, I mean, they were already building that chemistry. We saw that connection being built throughout the offseason last year, throughout training camp. Um, So they won't have to start from square one, which is good. But I think he's going to benefit a lot from being with Aaron Rodgers. Um, I, you know, they have other weapons too. So if you focus in on Garrett Wilson, they do have other guys that can beat you. Um, But I think Wilson's going to really benefit and he needs stability at quarterback. We've mentioned, you know, they've had a few guys come there and uh, not be the guys, Trevor Simeon, you know, Zach Wilson. They've, they've, uh, they haven't really given him much to work with, and he still has performed to, you know, a level that we're mentioning him with these other guys. Um, and I also wanted to pick up on something Johnny said too, as well, with um, in Jigba. I, I don't feel like he's earned his spot there. Um, I'm not really ready to say that he's better than Michael Pittman or George Pickens, for that matter. Um, from a production standpoint or a talent t- standpoint, you know, there's some younger guys that are a little bit more proven, but I do get the upside. But you also wonder, you know, how much DK Metcalf is going to cut into that. Um, are they going to bring Lockett back? You know, is he there for the long haul um, with his age? You know, obviously, um, you know, he's on the last e- end of his career more so than the prime years. But that still catches that you got to, you know, targets that you're competing with. Um, so I'm just, you know, not completely sold on him being in the top 10. Yeah. Do you think, uh, you know, out there in Seattle, Geno Smith is, is the solution at quarterback. Do you think they make any changes or is he pretty well solid? I like Geno, honestly. Um, you know, he had a really good proving year, got his contract, got paid. Um, you know, I think he's a there's not much ceiling but there's not a whole lot of floor either you know you know what you're getting with him um he's comfortable with that system that team obviously has trust in him they have some weapons and you know they battled some injuries this year um but he's I don't he's not the long-term answer but over the next couple of years while you're trying to develop and capitalize on this talent that you have, because they have a talent, they have the talent to win now. I think he's their guy moving forward. Um, I don't see a situation where they go grab somebody more ready to play um, than Gino at this moment, like not in the draft or mm-hmm. free agency. 
Gotcha, gotcha. Johnny, what do you think about the this discussion on quarterbacks? I know we're talking wide receivers, but quarterbacks got to get the ball to the wide receivers. Do you um, see Aaron uh, Rodgers, uh, you know, being the effect to bring Garrett Wilson up to the twelve spot here? And you know, you know, just because I brought up Geno Smith with Brandon, I want to see if you had any thoughts there too. So definitely, I love the question, and I love you went this direction with it and, and pointed it at me because I got something good to say. It, it might be a little bit of a hot take-ish, right? But Garrett Wilson, I think, absolutely has the potential. We saw what he did as a rookie um, with what he the cards he was given on that rough uh, Jets team offense specifically, right? But so Garrett Wilson, to me, I don't think he's bulletproof. Um, I don't think in Jigba Smith or, or you know, DK Metcalf or those guys, I don't know if they're bulletproof either because, you know, it's it's two sides of the coin, right? And and on one hand, you have a guy like – and granted, maybe Geno Smith might have a, a year or two extra than Rodgers. But then again, Rodgers is over 35 and he just keeps doing it, right? So, you know, if we're saying one year, then I'm not sold because it doesn't always mean the grass is greener, right? If you have – if the Jets, they – have an average year, maybe make the playoffs and don't go all the way, which probably what is what's going to happen. And and Rodgers doesn't come back if he retires. They listen. This could be like a Bryce Young situation, you know, like Bryce. The next Bryce Young could come in, and then you're fr- look at who who did what in Carolina, right? So, um, a lot of volatility there with Wilson, as much as the upside is. So it, it's it's open to your interpretation as a viewer, as a listener, on um, what you make of that situation. And Jigba Smith. Definitely. I mean, he could he doesn't have to have uh, 10 catches to to make his nut. You know, he can get a couple catches, 50 yard bomb touchdown. So that's that's good. That's that's good for his sake. But at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I don't I'm uncertain of what's going to happen with Geno Smith in the long run. He had a nice year two years ago, um, kind of didn't do so hot this year. It's kind of trending down for him. He's only getting older. So a lot of times the grass isn't always greener with turnover, you know, and, and that's that's where we are right now. A lot of things will happen in free agency. The draft is going to tell us a lot, you know, based on who's drafted. So weigh your options. You know, it's it's it, this is my perspective on it. I'm not saying fade these guys, but keep in mind that it, you know they it could go either way. Jackson Smith and Jigba could step up and be a home run hitter, and who, with whoever's there, Garrett Wilson could be great with you know Zach Wilson or Rogers, whoever, right? In theory, but it doesn't always happen, right? So if, if Bryce Young, not saying Bryce Young is a bad player, but if that situation happens on a bad team. To me, there, there's cracks in the in the uh, armor. Yeah, I just want to add. I think definitely you have to watch Seattle and because Geno's like that bridge player right now. I think this year in the draft they need to find their quarterback of the future, who's going to be the guy maybe two three years from now. While Jigma is going to be entering his prime years at that point. Um, so yeah, I think you're definitely watching to see what their solution is moving forward after Geno. They got to start figuring that out now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, talking about figuring things out, um, you know, you've got the Cowboys there, and they're not moving on from Mike McCarthy, even though they had, you know, a pretty down year. Uh, They have not seen, you know, great success. Um, And if they start off slow this coming season, I really personally think that they might move away from him. How does that affect CeeDee Lamb and his outlook at number three? And, Johnny, I'm going to go to you. Uh, for this one well i'd like to think it doesn't affect him really at all i mean this is to me he's cemented in the top three you can make an argument for him to be one you know based on his consistency and what's going on there in uh, dallas and you know i like mccarthy there especially for cd lamb's case to be in the top three you know keep everything hopefully everything sticks but if that's not the case uh I, you know what, C.D. Lamb, he's just so entrenched there. Another another point to bring into this factor is that uh, I don't think that Michael Gallup stays in, in in Dallas. And, you know, maybe Jalen Tolbert steps up as that number three wide receiver. Brandon Cooks is only getting older himself at 31. He's only got one more year on contract. So maybe we see Jalen Tolbert kind of step up as a number two. But, I mean, it, it, it's just uh, – you know, right now there is there is guys to take pressure off C.D. Lamb and keep him open. So I think they had a good system right now with, you know, the wide receiver grouping. Maybe next year if Gallup's not there and, you know, Tolbert steps up to number three, maybe, you know, that might change things. Maybe C.D. gets all this attention. But just the way Dak has, has looked for him and how multifaceted C.D. Lamb's game is, I'm not really 
discouraged. You know, I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't feel burnt. I'd still say if, if Mike McCarthy left, but he's he's still number three to me. Um, you know, at that point, uh, we'll see what 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 happens after that and adjust the rankings accordingly. But, you know, off the top now, I wouldn't be too affected by that. Gotcha. Yeah. So, Brandon, what do you think? Do you think that um, McCarthy has, uh, you know, whether he's there or not there, have any effect on C.D. Lamb and, and his placement here at number three? No, I, I would agree with Johnny. I don't think so. Um, you know, whoever the coaches or, you know, coordinators, whoever you're bringing in, they know um, one of the top priorities needs to be getting CD Lamb the football. Um, he's continued to deliver. He was, you know, proved that he could be that wide receiver one in fantasy football. Um, you know, I saw some, I saw him being taken, you know, in the top 10, in the top seven. And I was like, man, you know, I'm looking at guys like Tyreek Hill and Jefferson and Jamar Chase, like way before I'm looking at CD Lamb. But now, you know, um, I'm maybe preferring him over Justin Jefferson because we don't know what the Vikings are going to do with Kirk Cousins. You know, that's a big question mark. You know, are they going to move on for him? From him, um, is somebody else going to come in and you know um, pay him? I don't know. It seems like Kirk Cousins wants a longer term deal, and um, you know the Vikings with his age don't seem to be really interested in that. So I think CeeDee Lamb's a lot safer than some of these other receivers. Um, You look at A.J. Brown and their situation, bringing in Kellen Moore, um, who's on his third team in, you know, somewhat years. Uh, he's been bouncing around a lot and hasn't really had a whole lot of success recently. Um, You wonder how that impacts A.J. Brown, you know, and – that scheme and how, um, you know, the Eagles move forward, um, getting those guys the football. Um, so I, I think, you know, out of all these guys, C.D. Lamb is probably the safest pick if you're weighing production uh, scheme as well as um, age. Yeah, you know, you bring up a, a really good point with, you know, some of the other coaches and other situations that I, that's out there. And, you know, Johnny, I want to throw this one to you just because Brandon touched on Justin Jefferson here and Kirk Cousins. Um, do you, you know, Jefferson had uh, some injury problems, which, you know, affected his production, but also having to deal with, you know, other quarterbacks. If Kirk Cousins, you know, let's say doesn't come back or, you know, um, comes back and isn't the same Kirk Cousins as before because of that injury, what do you think that does to Jefferson at number one? Are you uh, fearful at all? Well, I think the the question then goes into how much faith do I have in Kirk Cousins? And if if I think if he comes back, he's going to be healthy, pick up where he left off at least for one year. But you know something different to me about when we talk when I talked about um, Wilson and Jackson Smith and Jigba is to me, it just doesn't matter, you know, who's the quarterback there with Justin Jefferson. They could get Bryce Young, whatever the situation is, it, you know, if the pieces stick around them, I know Daniel Hunter might, might leave. There's a couple guys that, you know, won't, won't come back, but if the offense stays as it is, I, I don't care who's the quarterback, Nick Mullins, Josh Dobbs. I mean, Justin Jefferson, he's, you know, he's not the biggest receiver, but he plays huge. You know, he can go up and get the ball. Uh, really. That's another kind of CD lamb, you know, what you have in him, you're going to use him. So to me, uh, I, I think that Kirk Cousins does come back and we pick up where we left off. Now, if the, if Kirk Cousins gets signed elsewhere, uh, there might be a growing period. You know, like Brandon said, a good point about Quincy uh, Garrett Wilson. I'm sorry, Garrett Wilson and, and uh, Rogers having that time to build rapport. You wouldn't have that, right? You'd be starting brand new. So I, I am a little bit of scared on that. But by the time the season rolls around, OTAs, you get through the preseason. Uh, I think that rust has has shaken off to that point. So. Again, I, I don't. It doesn't matter to to me, you know, what who the quarterback is. I would like to see a team like Minnesota, as a matter of fact, get like a Spencer Rattler playing behind Kirk Cousins for a year, and then see what he's got. I think that's a great look for them, and I think that might be the course the Vikings are thinking—a one and done—and then see what they're having in in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And and for those watching uh, this show, make sure you're checking out Johnny Freaking Fantasy on the IDP Plus Trends Show, where he's going to be covering and talking about these things as they develop um you know because that's that's the nature of that show is the the uh the topics and trends and what's going on uh in the nfl so he's going to be covering that make sure on the idp plus uh network you're following idp plus trends 
uh, and watching that piece of content, as well as the importance of going to the Fantasy Football Expo in August. Uh, you know, get a chance to to come and meet and interact directly with us. Uh, a lot of our guys are going to be on different panels and talking and discussing different fantasy football uh, topics. And so, you know, come, it's uh, August, I believe it's 9th through 12th, and you can go to thefantasyfootballexpo.com and learn about it, buy a ticket. Um, you know, it's a weekend event of some pretty awesome activities from, you know, just before that you'll get to We'll all be watching the Hall of Fame game while well, you get to go on the field uh, of the Hall of Fame uh, stadium there just a week after the pros are there. And, you know, there's a ton of big names in the uh, industry, you know, Andy Barons, Scott Fish, uh, you know, Jeff Manns, uh, all put on and for the, um, you know, fans to be able to come in and, and experience this amazing uh, weekend uh, from the community. So, you know, while you're also there, go and check out Draft Night Out. There's a link on the Fantasy Football Expo website and join Draft Night Out. It's a uh, event at a local bar. We take over the whole thing and there are uh, special leagues that are uh, drafted in person there during that event. Uh, we are sponsoring the Lawrence Taylor Division. So come play IDP with us uh, in the uh, Lawrence Taylor division draft in person. There's going to be a ton of giveaways. It's going to be a great event. Um, but, you know, I've gone multiple years. Brandon, you know, last week you were talking about how you're, you're going to Cooperstown. And, you know, now you kind of want, you know, maybe you're trying to hit all of the Hall of Fame. Yeah. So, you know, the NFL Hall of Fame, the Pro Football Hall of Fame is right there. Are you... You know, do you have a drive? Do you want to go to see that in August and come to the expo? Man, I definitely have to check my calendars. I know the first week of August I'm going to Chicago for a journalism convention. I think, like, the dates kind of might overlap. Um, but I will definitely, um, if, if I'm able to make it, if scheduling provides, absolutely be in the building. Yeah, absolutely awesome. Uh, and Johnny, I know you're you're not far from Canton itself, so you're gonna take the hop, skip, and jump over and, and come hang out with us. So, are you excited for your first year at the expo? Yeah, man, I'm excited. I don't have to hop it on a plane and go to Cali or nothing like that. I'm in Pittsburgh, so it's you know short drive for me. So, uh, hey, maybe if you're passing by Pittsburgh, hop in my minivan. I'll take you there. So <laughs> I got room, but no, I'm excited for it, and I'm I'm thankful it's not far. I'm not an airplane type guy. Um, but so, yeah, Cleveland or Canton, Ohio, looking forward to it. Um, yeah, it, it's right around the time that we're getting into the season, beginning of August. So it's going to be a lot of hype. Looking forward to meeting the great, wonderful colleagues. And, yeah, I've seen a bunch of Scott Fishbowl and and these leagues pop up. And, you know, I've, I've always followed, uh, you know, people in the IDP network before I joined in. Never knew what it was. So very excited to learn. You know, this year is going to be a big learning. As much as I'm giving information, I'm learning still, too. Well, hey, you know, you're going to have to make sure you get into the Scott Fishbowl as well. Uh, I know they have a live event in Pittsburgh. Um, you know, that stuff's going to be released. So, hey, you know, go to the the fantasyfootballexpo.com, sign up, get tickets for the expo. But if you want to get in the Scott Fishbowl, which is a international charity league, go to scottfishbowl.com, enter your details, and uh, Scott will pick, you know, it's an invitational style. So there's about 3,500 invites that go out in july and you could be one of them and play in this league with uh you know be in divisions with matthew barry andy barons uh you know you name the the big players they're in there and it promotes toys for tots uh donations and they put together about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year um that they spread across the country uh through uh you know uh toys for tots this past year, I was lucky to be one of the purchasers for that. So uh, you can check out my Twitter at Nate Cheat and see that experience. But, you know, so with that, we're going to move on to the second tier of wide rece wide receivers here. And for our audio listeners uh, at number 13, we've got Michael Pittman Jr., DJ Moore, Zay Flowers, Devonta Smith, Drake London, Nico Collins, DK Metcalf, 
T. Higgins at number 20, Debo Samuel, Stefan Diggs, Devontae Adams, and at number four, Mike Evans. Uh, so before we really launch into this, I got a good question for you, Johnny. Um, you know, Nico Collins finished number 12 for wide receivers in PPR. Another year under C.J. Stroud, you know, just like we were talking about, you know, all of the volatility and some of those other teams here we have just another year of stability and what they put together this past season you know does that give him a greater chance to move into that tier one i think so and 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 one thing that goes in uh into the conversation here with nico collins is i think a lot of people will be um hesitant you know to to put him that high because of tank dell's presence well tank dell might not be there at the beginning of the season and actually, I'm not afraid of Tank Dell. I like them both a lot. I don't. I would, don't think I'd put Tank Dell this high. I do think he has an, uh, value, absolute value. But at the same time, yeah, sometimes you need two wide receivers to complement each other, right? And and it's not. This is not a situation where the the number one guy is getting, you know, um, or the targets I should say are even, right? And somebody has to step up to be the number one. Like a team like Seattle really spreads the ball around well. Um, it, but here in, in Houston, it, number one, they throw so much. You know, they have a great quarterback now with Stroud. Um, Nico Collins has always kind of been like a question, like, you know, wh- where, where was he? He had good draft stock, but he kind of hadn't shown up to this point. Now he gets in touch in line with uh, C.J. Stroud. And he just absolutely goes bonkers. So, and I know Joe, I know Joe likes uh, Nico Collins. I'm sure when the he writes his next article, he's going to be moved up there a little bit, but yeah, Nico Collins definitely could make the make the jump. I I really think they have a good um good team, good coaching there in Houston, and I I think that yeah he's going to continue to build on what what was in the home stretch of last year. Nice, yeah, I I fully agree with that. Uh, Brandon, what about you? So you know I've got some I got a lot of Nico Collins rookie cards. Are those going to start going up in value? Do I need to start sending those out for grades? Oh, Nathan, I didn't know you were in the hobby. I, I am myself. Okay. Respect, respect. Um, I think so. I think, you, like you said, another year. We saw what they did in year one, right? I mean, over 1,400 yards. Like, the dude just comes out and has by far his best season. Um, and C.J. Stroud's only going to get better. They're, the more they're – playing together and getting those reps, the more comfortable they'll continue to be. Um, I think this is going to be a dynamic duo for years to come, and I'm excited. Um, I'm also looking at another guy that I think could make a jump with Nico Collins, Zay Flowers, who we saw just break onto the scene his rookie year. I think he comes back with a vengeance next year after, you know, some tough plays in that playoffs. I think he goes to work this offseason. I think he comes in, he puts on a little more muscle, probably gets a little heavier. Um, he'll be, you know, a little bit more physical next year. But um, I like him and the rise that we're seeing with Lamar Jackson. You know, those guys are going to be dynamic as well. Nice, nice. Yeah, uh, speaking of, you know, being in the the card – uh hobby uh i've got way too many <laughs> if you ask my wife i've got a bunch so at some point we're gonna have to connect and uh and talk through some of those cards we've got Absolutely. um but you know switching over here to johnny um you know there's some questions surrounding mike evans staying in tampa um that could be answered even before this video comes out but what's the recipe for evans uh to stay in this tier two or possibly move up So let me say this, you know, Evans is over 30. He had a great year this year. What is it? 10 years now of a thousand or more yards, right? A thousand yards, at least Uh, eight, 10, something like that. So this guy just keeps doing it. But at the same time, I don't, I don't know if he's ever going to make that jump because of his age. Uh, He, if if he didn't do it this year, when is he going to do it? Right. So uh, Mike Evans and a side note, a caveat with him is, you know, he is testing open waters. Doesn't mean he's done in Tampa Bay. He just simply seeing how much, you know, interest he has, what his options are. Smart move by him, smart business move. Um, Mike Evans, yeah, I mean, you can make that case. If, if we're looking at it for a, a redraft, right, you could say, and, and guess what? If you're saying, if you're going into a dynasty and you're saying, hey, one great year is better than a question mark of, you know, eight good years. That's your guy. He's fallen, right? He's down here at 24. Mike Evans, I think, can still go somewhere and put up the same numbers he did this year, whether it's a, a re-sign or going somewhere else. I'd like to see him re-sign because, you know, why move away from that consistency? That, that would kind of scare me. 
Um, Mike Evans, yeah, I, th I think he returns. I think he's just playing his cards right. Unless someone really offers him buku money, I think he comes back, and hopefully they bring back Baker Mayfield. They have good talent there. They've got, they've got Kate Ott and they've got Chris Godwin guys to kind of draw attention off him and let Mike Evans go up and get the ball. So I really like Mike Evans, especially if he resigns, and that's what I'm expecting him to do. Um, one one player I don't know their certainty. I don't know the fate is Stephon Diggs, two spots above him at 22. I don't know if if uh, you know over the off season if he's going to be continually rubbed the wrong way. It seems like something's off there in Buffalo. So I I don't know his fate. Um, Mike Evans as well, but these are two guys that might go find, you know, work elsewhere. But I still think, uh, if you, especially if you're looking for a solid one year or two years, I think they're a little bit undervalued. And uh, I, next year, if they resign, I, I think they pick up and uh, are, are fine wide receivers at this position. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I know that there was a, a recent report that Mike Evans and, and um, while this video might come you know, after that decision is made, him saying that he wants to uh, play for an elite quarterback, um, you know, and there there is some question still about, uh, um, shit, you just said his name, uh, the quarterback there in Tampa. Uh, Baker, ba Baker, Mayfield. Baker Mayfield. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Baker Mayfield, uh, you know, re-signing or still being there. Um, I, I see Baker as, you know, one of the top, uh, quarterbacks, especially after what he did last year. So it, it is a little surprising for me to hear him, hear Mike say something along those lines, other than I'd like to play with Baker or an elite quarterback. But kind of selfishly and looking at this, there's a lot of uh, ties to Detroit for Mike as well. And, you know, I don't know if uh, I would definitely put golf in the elite category, but it could be very interesting. But Brandon, I want to kind of, you know, offer this topic also to you about Mike Evans. And if there's a place, is it Detroit? Is it Tampa with Mayfield? Is it somewhere else that, uh, you know, gives us another year of top Mike Evans or maybe a couple years? What do you see? Yeah, I think that there is a perfect fit for him somewhere. Um, and unfortunately, this is just an issue for the rest of the league and probably a lot of viewers watching. But um, there is a, a need for a number one target and a pass catcher for the reigning Super Bowl champions. Um, him out there in Kansas City, I think they're going to go get Pat Mahomes, a number one receiver at some point. Um, I do not think that's Travis Kelsey anymore, even though I think, you know, he's a, definitely a great complimentary piece at this um, span of his career, you know, did some great things in the playoffs. But they need a guy. They need the guy who can be the guy on the outside and stretch the field and, you know, just uh, draw attention away from everybody else and make the big catches on third down in November when it's cold out. Um, so I think that would be a perfect fit for him. I think if he went to the Chiefs and they could make the contract work, um, it seems like they'll be in the market for a receiver with all the drops this year. Um, he could go down there and play with an elite quarterback who's more elite than Patrick Mahomes. He also said that he wanted to play somewhere where he could compete from Super Bowls. Um, seems like they're doing that pretty well in Kansas City. So I think if he ended up there, um, it, the sky would be the limit. Yeah, that's a, that's a very interesting spot that I, I really wasn't even thinking about. But, you know, and, and switching this over to Johnny, if you want to have a, a, a second chance at the topic is, you know, are, they're obviously hurting from uh, letting Tyreek Hill go. You know, does this plug that hole if Mike Evans lands in Kansas City? You know, I think so. I think, uh, I think what Mike Evans' strategy might hear – I don't know if, if it's really a strain to, you know, a shot at Baker Mayfield. I don't take it as that. Mm -hmm. I think Mike Evans is just at that point where, like Brandon said, he's chasing a ring. I think that's what, what it comes down to. He's kind of putting those words out there and hoping, you know, who, who, how many great quarterbacks are there? Well, there's probably f five maybe, you know. So Patrick Mahomes is definitely um, one, of the, one of the top two, if not three, right? So uh, I think that he's kind of putting himself on the map there. You know, going back to – I got this guy on my wall, Johnny Manziel. Didn't matter. Johnny Manziel and Baker Mayfield, they both had swag. You know what? And, and, and Mike Evans just did it with him. He just throw, throw the ball up and let him go get it. You know, watch the documentary, little Shannon Sharp sit down with Johnny Manziel. He's telling him all I had to do is go like this. And Mike Evans knew to run that go and I'll throw him that ball. He'll catch it. Right. So mm -hmm. to me, uh, 
I, I don't think now on one hand, if Mike Evans goes somewhere else, he has the talent, right? But just how consistent he's been with the Tampa Bay Bucks, I, I just don't think it's a hunch. It's just kind of like a gut feeling. I don't think if he goes any if he goes anywhere else, he'll put up the same numbers. Now, is he going to help that team win a Super Bowl? Absolutely. Is he a great player? Yeah, absolutely. Great locker room, all that. So I think he's kind of saying like, hey. If, if I get that shot to a contender, a Kansas City, a team like that, I'm going to take it. He's at that point of his career. But when we're talking about fantasy, do I think that benefits him? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And, you know, look, Kansas City's got their, uh, their plenty of Super Bowls. Let's uh, let's have him go to Detroit, give them a Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, with that, let, let's move on to the, uh, the final set of tiers and these are some of the guys where, you know, you get them late and, you know, the, the possibility of them uh, exceeding expectations could help you win your championship. Uh, so starting off at number 25 for the audio listeners, Amari Cooper, Rasheed Rice, Jordan Addison, Jahan Dotson, Jaden Reed, George Pickens, Tank Dell, Josh Downs at 32, Chris Godwin, Calvin Ridley, Terry McLaurin, Deontay Johnson. Um, you know, Johnny, who are you seeing in this group that are, are the diamonds that, you know, could uh, exceed these expectations? Well, definitely Amari Cooper, number 25, just on the sense of he's this low. I, I do think he can have at least one or two more great years. Um, so I think he's a diamond in the rough. Rasheed Rice could be, depending on, you know, what they do with the draft. If they bring in Mike Evans, you know, might throw a wrench in that. But as it is right now, Rasheed Rice is a great dynasty get. Um, I really like Jaden Reed a lot. I think he has room to grow. It is it is crowded there in Green Bay, and they do spread the ball out a lot. I think they only had uh, two or one time uh, the leading receiver was back-to-back -back weeks. So they really spread the ball out there. That scares me, but Jaden Reed's a great player. I, I'll leave George Pickens for Brandon. I know he wants to talk about him, even though he's in my hometown, Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah. um, Tank Dell, I think he could be you know really good. Uh, he's probably – Unfortunately, he's a household name now, so you're going to have to pay a hefty tag in health. You know, where is he going to be back week one? That's not guaranteed. So watch what happens with that in the offseason. Uh, and beyond that, I think Josh Downs. I think Josh Downs can make the jump. Uh, I think he can have a solid sophomore year. Again, we've seen so sophomore slumps, so it's not a guarantee. And But this this is a low price tag, all, all things considered, for Josh Downs. And uh, one more, I'll, I'll say Chris Godwin's depends on happens what happens with Mike Evans. If Mike Evans goes somewhere, um, I think Chris Godwin's, you know, his stock goes up. Um, but I'm fine as it is. Maybe maybe people, you know, right now are afraid of, of um, you know, Mike Evans returning there and Chris Godwin kind of had a down year. I don't think that's going to last. I think Chris Godwin is able to rebound coming up. So those are the receivers that I'm looking at um, that, you know, you can take low here. I'll uh, in, invest low and, and hopefully get reap the benefits. Nice. Nice. And, and so Brandon, you know, I'm going to let you get to just George Pickens as, as Johnny's called out here, but I do have the question on Rasheed Rice. Uh, he seems to be a target in startup drafts uh, and he was outside the top 24 finish this year for wide receivers and PPR, but he had a hot season end. Now is he a cheap wide receiver that you are personally targeting to acquire? For me personally, no. Um, there are a couple guys I like better than him on this list. Josh Downs being one of them. Um, also, Jaden Reed kind of proved that. Like, I have Christian Watson on my dynasty team, but Jaden Reed's kind of proven that he's like he has the potential to be the guy in Green Bay. Um, it seemed like he was kind of um, the 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 most reliable as far as just being healthy and being available. Um, for that offense. Um, I love George Pickens, like we mentioned. Um, Jordan Addison's kind of facing that same dilemma. I think with Justin Jefferson, you don't worry about it as much with who's the quarterback, but that number two guy's going to hurt. Like, Jordan Addison will be more impacted by them not having an adequate quarterback more so than um, Justin Jefferson will be. So that's something you got to watch. And the same thing with Jahan Dotson. I think he's got talent. He just hasn't had any stability, him or um, Terry McLaurin, um, out there in, in Washington. They just haven't had much stability at the quarterback position. So I think that's hindered their um, their growth, to be honest with you. But I think they have some weapons, and if they figure it out in the draft this year, um, I think both those guys are going to be um, two players to watch. Nice. Well, 
um, you know, just wrapping up here, Johnny, do you have any other thoughts on uh, these these last uh, tier of players? Um, you know, someone that kind of speaks to me uh, that I'm just kind of watching for, not necessarily if it's fan- necessarily fantasy relevant, but, you know, as like, you know, un- uh, unashamed Lions fan, I've seen some some talks of Calvin Ridley to the Lions. So he's a name that I'm kind of watching. You see any other names like that that you're just kind of keeping an eye out for? Uh, I think definitely Godwin, you know, what happens in free agency there. If Mike Evans resigns, kind of just status quo, it, it is what it is. Um, be interested to see what happens there with Washington. I, I don't think that Sam Howell got a fair shake. I mean, he was under so much pressure. I, I do think they're going to draft a quarterback again, so I don't think that's great. You know, you have to start at ground zero again with those two receivers. But Terry McLaurin, if we're talking about, you know, history and, and track record, he should – you know, bounce back, bounce back well. So uh, D- Dotson kind of scares me, although he has huge upside, I think. So McLaurin, yeah, I think he bounces back well. Deontay Johnson, even though he's a Pittsburgh guy, I'm not really too much of a fan of. Um, I think he's, especially like when you look at the player he is, I think if he goes somewhere else eventually, I don't think he'll be a guy. So I think he, you know, get it while the getting's good in Pittsburgh, but have that on the back burner that if, I don't think, my opinion is, if he goes somewhere else, he'll be what he is here. Um and then one other guy I wanted to say is, yeah, Jordan Addison. I think he could definitely flip the switch and, and have a better year. Uh, he had a great year as a rookie, you know, caught those deep balls. If he can kind of get more a little bit consistent and better rapport with the quarterback, and, you know, it's tough. Justin Jefferson's there. He gets the ball so much. They got Hawkinson. But Hawkinson's not going to be there to start the year. So maybe, you know, if you're thinking uh, in, in Dynasty, you know, pick this guy and you're getting a little bit over on people, I think you might be right because – he might get some some love you know, early on in the season because of the vacancy by Hawkinson, get more balls thrown to him. And at that point, you know, this, the sky's the limit. You have somebody who came off a great rookie year. He, first first two weeks, he's great. Hey, trade him for gold. You know what I mean? That's that's what it's tough to trade a young young person. But, uh, you know, ride ride the waves, sell them high, buy them low. So I think Jordan Addison, if he sparks it off, has a couple great weeks to begin it. Uh, his values through the roof. So these are guys definitely they can go up and down. All right. Well, there we go. We've wrapped up uh, wide receiver tiers uh, from, you know, one through 36 uh, as a ranking and then, you know, three, three levels of tiers. And so make sure that you're following, liking, subscribing to IDP plus network, uh, IDP plus YouTube channel uh, and going to our, our website, IDP uh, and being a subscriber you know, uh, we've got a couple more of these uh, ready to go. We're going to be doing the tight ends. Uh, we'll be doing cornerbacks and wrapping up with, I think, defensive tackles. Uh, and, and so, you know, we then we'll start getting into some some rookie content. So I'm really excited to get into, you know, some of our own rankings, probably, you know, done through uh, Johnny and with uh, the help of Brandon. And, and so as we wrap up here, just uh, real quick, let everyone know where they can find your content, what you're working on. I'll start with you, Johnny. Absolutely. So keep watching here on IDP Plus Rankings. Um, check out the show if you haven't already with me and Steve uh, at Average Joe's Fantasy Football. We do the IDP Plus Trends show. Check that out. It comes out once a week. Um, also, give me a follow on Twitter. I'll follow you back have good content. Um, I always always like to retweet anything if I see, especially an IDP that piques the interest, can help anybody out because I was just in, in your shoes not even a year ago, right? Being the, the viewer, the watcher. So um, I, I know, you know, what things that can help people that are from the average Joes to deep um, deep heads, you know, degenerate degenerates. So follow me on Twitter at Johnny Freakin F1. I do a lot of reposting of the great, once again, the great work that IDP Plus team is, is coming out with. Uh, and it doesn't stop. So, you know, I, I, bear with me because you're going to get a lot of retweets, but it's all good content. I promise you that. There we go. Brandon, where are they finding you? Absolutely. Guys, lock in with me. Uh, Brandon at Brandon Lee TV on all social media and YouTube. Uh, cranking out content daily, weekly, whenever you need it. And uh, it feels good to be back with you guys as well. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to have this team. Glad to be under the IDP Plus Rankings moniker. And, uh, you know, if you want to follow me, I'm at Nate Cheat on Twitter. uh, And I generally am the guy that's talking about, you know, creating content. uh, But, you know, talk, follow these guys for the fantasy football advice. Um, 
you know, like I said, subscribe to the channel, become a member, get into our Discord. We have a great community. Uh, and with that, we're going to wrap up, uh, and we will see you next week. Bye, y'all. Thank you for watching this IDP guys video. If you like this content and you want more fantasy football content, click here. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos to help you master your IDP league, click here to subscribe.